Okay, for this first lesson, we're going to be investigating quadratic functions in vertex form. So for the following information for y is equal to x squared, which is our basic quadratic, these points are the key points you'll use all the time when we're building our transformations out. So first we're going to fill in the chart. If I said that y is equal to x squared, negative 3 squared would be positive 9, negative 2 squared would be 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. I'm going to graph this out on my graph. So I'm going to start at that point of negative 3 and 9. Next I'm going to go to my negative 2 and 4, negative 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 4, and if you're thinking of this logically, the next logical one would be if I went to 3, I'd wind up with a positive 9. When we connect the points as best we can, we can see that this makes this upside down arch. We refer to this shape as a parabola. In this case, does it open upwards or open downwards? Well, if the two sides of the quadratic are going to continue moving upwards, we say that it opens up. Why does a graph lie only in quadrants 1 and 2? Well, because if I take any rational number and I square it, it will always be positive. A negative times a negative is positive, a positive times a positive is positive, so the solution should always wind up being positive once I square it. If I'm stating, <coughs> sorry, if I'm stating the key points on the graph, then it's just going to be these coordinates that we have from our chart. So I'm going to have the key points of negative 3 and 9, negative 2 and 4, negative 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 4, and then theoretically I would continue on to 3 and 9. What is the x-intercept and the y-intercept? Well, we can see that in this case they're actually both the same. It crosses the axis at the point of origin. So the x-intercept is going to be 0 and the y-intercept, which we refer to as b, is also going to be 0. What is the domain and the range of this? Well, let's start with the domain. The domain, we put in our set notation, is represented by x, which we can see over here. And it's going to keep moving to the left, it's going to keep moving to the right. x is an element of all real numbers, which means that if it's a real number, whether it's rational or irrational, that's a possible value for x. For the range, for y, we have a lowest point that exists for y, or a minimum, of 0. It never goes below that 0. So I'm going to say that y just has to be greater than or equal to 0, where y is an element of all real numbers because it doesn't have an upper limit, just a lower limit or a minimum. The axis of symmetry is the mirror line which splits the parabola in half. What is the equation of this axis of symmetry? 
Well, if I take a look here, I could draw an imaginary line that comes right through the y-axis, and I can see that it is equally mirrored on both sides of this. There's going to be a reflection. Any vertical line is always going to be in the form of x equals, because it doesn't matter what y is, x is always the same. And in this case, everywhere on this line, x is always equal to 0. The vertex is where the axis of symmetry intersects the parabola. The vertex can represent either a minimum or lowest point and a maximum or highest point depending on whether the parabola opens upwards or downwards. So if I take a look at my parabola and that axis of symmetry line that we just drew, they cross right here. That's going to be my vertex. And in this case, the vertex occurs at 0, 0. Does the function have a maximum or a minimum value? Well, in this case, it's going to have a minimum because it has a lowest point that it hits, and then it goes up to infinity. So I'm going to say that it's got a minimum value, and the minimum value in this case is 0. The lowest that the uh, quadrac will ever hit, or parabola will ever hit, is 0. So, there's some important terminology you need to know. The first is, if we're talking about a quadratic function, a quadratic function is determined by a second degree of a polynomial, which means that in order for it to be a quadratic, you need to have an x squared. So it's got to be a polynomial, and it has to have an x squared. You can't have an x cubed, and you can't just have x to the power of 1. The general form of this would be y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all real numbers, and a can't equal 0, because if a equals 0, then that would eliminate the squared, and then it would just become a linear function. The vertex, or standard form, is y is equal to a bracket x minus p, close the bracket and square it, plus q, where once again a, p, and q are real numbers, and a still can't equal 0. Otherwise, if a equals 0, it's going to cancel this out, and we lose our x squared again. The graph of a quadratic function is in the shape of a parabola that either has a minimum or lowest point, or a maximum or highest point that occurs at the vertex. Every parabola is going to be symmetrical about a vertical line called the axis of symmetry. This is always going to be where the parabola and the um, vertex meet. X-intercepts are going to be, we learned this last year, the value of X when Y is equal to 0. Anytime Y equals 0, that is going to be the X-intercept. Inversely, the Y-intercept will always be when x equals 0. The difference between these two is that you can see that the x-intercept, I can have 0, 1, or 2 of these, which we're going to look a little further into. The y-intercept, there's always only ever going to be one exact y-intercept for any parabola that we're dealing with. You can see the picture here where it represents our axis of symmetry. And then we can see that we have, in this case, two x-intercepts and one and y-intercepts. Or we can have the same thing going in the opposite direction, two x-intercepts, one y-intercept. In this case, we have a minimum because the graph is opening up. And in this case, we have a maximum because the graph is opening down. 
The domain, for the most part, is pretty easy. The domain is going to be all the possible values for the independent variable or the stuff represented by x. And unless we're doing word problems or things that put on other restrictions, the domain for any parabola is always going to be x, e, r. The range is either going to have a minimum or a lowest point or a maximum or highest point. This is going to depend on whether the graph opens up or opens down.